it's very nice to see you there, some of you, and some of you I cannot see at all. But I know that uh, you are, quite many of you are here somewhere in Vilnius or perhaps in the surroundings. And some of them, some of you are somewhere out there, like in, uh, in South Africa, if I understood correctly. Yes. So, uh, very nice that you are all there. And um, so the subject uh, today was Finland. Uh, so um, those who are here near Finland, uh, so it's quite easy, you know, where we stand. And uh, uh, when, you, when you think about traveling to Finland, it's very easy because uh, you can actually drive from Vilnius to first to Tallinn and then take the ferry to Helsinki. So about 7.5 hours driving to uh, Tallinn. And uh, if you want to stop, or, you know, of course, uh, Latvia in between, visit Riga and so on. And uh, actually, I have done it uh, quite many times, uh, and it's uh, quite nice scenery, uh, uh, especially after Riga when you are very close to the seashore. And then, of course, when you uh, reach Tallinn, Tallinn is also a very nice city. Uh, old city is really beautiful, and then take the ferry to Helsinki, which is about two hours, two and a half hours, uh, depending on uh, the ferry which you book on. But uh, they are really nice ferries, as uh, for example, Megastar is really like a hotel for two hours, and uh, you can enjoy the, the travel. Uh, perhaps first of all, a couple of facts about Finland. So 5.5 million people nowadays live in Finland, and um, uh, we are uh, quite uh, uh, we live quite long. Men till 79 years old. Women, of course, longer. Uh, also in Finland, 84 years. And uh, in Finland, we speak Finnish which is uh, about 87% uh, uh, are Finnish speaking, but we are a uh, bilingual country, so we also have official Swedish language, which is about 5%. And then Sami language is mother tongue, about 2,000 indigenous Sami people. Uh, religion is Christianity, Lutheran, um, a little bit less than 70%, and about 1% Orthodox. And uh, um, Finland is quite a big country, the surface space. Um, and um, if we compare the number of people and the surface, so we get about 80 inhabitants per kilometer. So it means that uh, not so many people in Finland. So if you want to have peace and quiet, it's definitely the place to be. Um, then about our uh, our state and government. So we were declared in the, uh, independence December 6th in 1917. Previously, we were a Grand Duchy in the Russian Empire for one, 108 years, and before that, we were part of Sweden for 600 years. Um, Finland is a republic, parliamentary democracy, and uh, you know that we are a member of European Union since 1995, and uh, I was uh, involved in that process. I worked in Brussels from 90 to 94, so I saw the beginning of our uh, application and then how all, all this process went through and it was very exciting. At the moment, the President of the Republic uh, uh, is Sauli uh, Niinistö, and he has been uh, President for a long time. And the next elections will be in 2024, and he is not longer um, eligible. Uh, 
Prime Minister is a female, uh, Sanna Marin, and actually he, she has been very uh, much in the newspaper, newspapers, online papers, on TV, because, of course, uh, that she is a young uh, female Prime Minister. Of course, in Finland it's not so big deal, but in many countries it is still uh, quite important that you have this kind of uh, uh, examples that young young females can reach uh, something like to be prime minister. Uh, and um, of course, uh, uh, she has been in a tough place for for the whole time because uh, this uh, pandemic started very fast after. Uh, she had been chosen to be prime minister, so basically she has been working on this uh, COVID situation all the time. Then, how, old, how old is Young? Young is, in this case, Young is, uh, I think, 36. Oh, lovely. Yes. And we have, uh, half of the government is uh, female. So uh, it's pretty much 50-50 at the moment. And uh, I think uh, almost all the party leaders are women, five of them, and uh, they are, four of them are about 20, 35, uh, 38, and uh, one is a little bit older. But I mean, young generation is coming up. And then when you think about uh, why should you travel to Finland, of course, it depends on what do you like. But, um, of course, I'm representing Finland, and I, I love Finland very much. Uh, I don't know all the corners of Finland very well, because uh, uh, it's a vast country. But uh, I can assure you that in every corner of Finland you meet very nice people. Some say that we are a bit reserved, but uh, if you have that kind of impression, you just have to talk to them. And uh, you notice that they are really nice and uh, talkative as well. Uh, Finland ranks as the happiest country in the world. Perhaps you have noticed uh, some news about this, uh, but it's not by coincidence. I mean, we have been uh, already many times chosen to be the happiest country. So uh, what makes us happy? Uh, there are different reasons, but uh, perhaps that uh, we have clean air, we have rich water, and uh, society is very stable. And of course, election system, and uh, it's not a corrupted country, so people live a very normal life. And uh, during hard times, you have a very good uh, network for social services, so that uh, I think that nobody is left alone, uh, people are taken uh, care of. And of course, media real freedom is very important. That uh, Sometimes, of course, you, you might think that this kind of a social media, uh, times it's very difficult because everybody can say whatever in social media and then you get up, uh, get to this uh, hate speech uh, moods as well, but uh, that's a global phenomenon and uh, that's going to be a problem also uh, globally, how to, how to work with that. Uh, what is also very important for us in Finland is Finnish nature. Um, different landscapes in different uh, parts of the country. But uh, what you see when you come uh, by airplane, for example, in Finland, you see uh, a lot of forest, 75% of Finland is covered by trees, uh, and the rest is basically water. So almost 200,000 lakes in Finland, and that's why we are called the land of thousand lakes. So uh, lake and lakes and, uh, and forests make perhaps also our nature uh, as, uh, as people. And of course, uh, we share also uh, seashore, Baltic, Baltic Sea. So for some people, of course, uh, sea is more important than inland, inland lakes. Um, uh, 
uh, in Finland, uh, more than 80% of Finnish people say the forest is very important to them. And uh, uh, it's not a scary thing for us. So of course, many people in Europe, they, they think that uh, if they end up into a forest, that it'll, it's a little, it's, uh, a little bit scary. But uh, in Finland, uh, we associate it with relaxing and giving us energy. And also, of course, uh, it's something that we make use of. So we go to forest to pick up uh, berries, mushroom. Uh, perhaps uh, we get some wood for our summer cottages from forest. So it's uh, both uh, for a little bit of work and, and pleasure. And of course, for our economy, forests are very important still. So this is... Uh, one scenery from Finland, and Thousand Lakes. So it is, uh, uh, we have a, an area called Lakeland, uh, area where we have a lot of lakes. It's in eastern part of Finland, and there's a very big, a big lake called Saima. So, uh, and there you can see a ring seal, which is one of the ma most endangered species in the world. And uh, there is even a TV program for for these seals because when they when they uh, come, uh, so that you can see them. So it's very inter interesting to see their life lives. Then uh, Lapland, of course. Here you can see. Uh, Northern Lights. Um, I myself haven't seen really <laughs> these kind of beautiful lights, but I sure, I sure, I'm sure that my colleague Anne here has seen a lot because she has been work, working and uh, living in Lapland. Yeah, sure. Um, hello, everyone. I'm Anne. I'm the deputy head of mission here at Embassy. So yes, definitely. I studied in, in Rovaniemi, in the University of Lapland. So I lived, for six years I lived in Rovaniemi and these kinds of um, northern lights that you see in the picture, it's something quite, it's not something that happens only, you know, once once a winter, but so it's, it's quite normal. It's quite amazing, but it's quite normal. And I saw pictures this year uh, and I, uh, they were really exceptionally nice ones uh, this year. And this is how it looks like. A lot of snow every year, which is nice. And uh, of course, uh, um, there are many people whose livelihood depends on this snow and sceneries, and they expect tourists to come to Finland. So this is also one of the nice pictures from Lapland, and uh, this kind of picture uh, I have seen because I have been there in Lapland in, Lap in Lapland uh, in the winter time as well. And of course, we cannot uh, forget about Santa Claus. You know that Santa Claus lives in Lapland. He doesn't live in any other place, and real Santa comes from Finland and lives in Korvatunturi. So uh, if somebody tries to say, say to you that he comes from some other part of the world, it, not, it is not true. So Santa Claus is very, uh, very perhaps the most famous Finn. Uh, and uh, of course, during uh, Christmas time, before Christmas, he travels a lot and uh, uses reindeer for traveling. Perhaps even airplanes sometimes nowadays. But uh, there's also a nice uh, habit that uh, people around the world, they can uh, write letters to Santa Claus. And uh, if they are lucky, they get answers. They always get answers. It's, you always get a letter back. And you can actually visit visit Santa. This is something if you travel with kids in in Rovaniemi, you can visit Santa Santa in his house and uh, have some pictures taken taken as a souvenir. So it, it's something quite nice. Yeah, and of course they are also in the summertime there. Yeah, every day. Yeah, but uh, the nicest season, of course, is. Uh, 
uh, during the winter time when you have snow and the, this, this kind of a special atmosphere. And then we go to culture. Uh, so art, of course, well, there are about 3,000 professional visual artists and 60 art museums and a lot of galleries in Finland. At the moment, uh, media art and photography are the most prominent ones of Finnish contemporary art. And uh, from that, uh, um, for example, in, in uh, um, video art, we have Eijalisa Ahtila. And actually, um, if I have understood correctly, and if corona situation allows us, Eijalisa Ahtila will be presenting her work here in Vilnius uh, later this year. So we hope that everything uh, goes back to towards normal. And Elina Proterus is a photographer, if I remember correctly. And uh, then Helena Scherbeck is a female, uh, very well-known uh, uh, artist, uh, painter uh, from previous times. Um, Ateneo is the home of Finnish art and part of the Finnish National Gallery. And uh, there you can see really uh, masterpieces that every Finn knows, like uh, uh, masterpieces from Albert Edelfeld, Axel Gallen Kallela, Helena Scherfbeck, Hugo Simberg, Ellen Tesla, and many others. Uh, so this is definitely worth visiting. And also, uh, sure, they have uh, international uh, artists in the collection. Cezanne, Chabal, Gauguin, Van Gogh, Hammersmith, and Leger, and many others. And uh, also exhibitions like Tuve Janssen, Amedeo Modigliani, Pablo Picasso. Uh, so. Uh, this is situ uh, Ateneum is situated in the very center of Helsinki, so it's very easy to visit there and uh, highly recommend highly recommended. So some of the pictures here, uh, Albert Edelfeld, Queen Bianca, uh, Axel Gallen Gallela, uh, very typical uh, painting. Uh, about winter. Uh, this is very something very uh, much favored by Finns, this kind of uh, sceneries, uh, uh, especially uh, earlier. And this boy with the crow, uh, of course, depicts the uh, Farming, farming time in Finland and uh, agricultural land, which which uh, Finland earlier was. And here, Helena Schäfbeck, dancing shoes. Uh, Helena Schäfbeck's works have been auctioned lately for very high sums uh, in Europe. And Hugo Simberg, the wounded angel. Then about design, uh, so Finland is one of the world's leading countries in design, and uh, there we want to uh, combine uh, practicality and functionality. So uh, that is something uh, what is uh, very uh, much favored by Finns and also in the Euro in Europe. Uh, they have got a lot of uh, success. Uh, traditional strong areas of uh, Finnish design are furniture, glass, and ceramics, and uh, also industrial design. Uh, 2012, in Helsinki was the world design capital, and 2014, uh, it was named UNESCO City of Design. And here you can see some of the design pieces. And these marks are by Marimekko, and you can see the very famous design of uh, this flower. 
Unicorn, which I cannot remember now in in English, but you draw, you know the the flower what it's presenting. But this is very much uh, in different kinds of uh, tablecloths or in clothes as well uh, used by Marimekko. Is that a poppy? Yes, poppy. Yes. Poppy. 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 Yes, definitely. Poppy lane. <laughs> I remember that one. <clears throat> and then this is Itala. Um, and here you can see vases uh, from Itala in different shapes and um, uh, different colors, of, of course, as well. Here's Arica. And here, Laponia jewelry, uh, gold jewelry or silver jewelry. <coughs> and this is also uh, quite uh, actually this was very when I was younger this was very popular then I think there was a time that uh, it was uh, looked upon a little bit old fashioned but I know, now I notice that it's again uh, very very highly uh, valued so this kind of uh, Jewelry, which is uh, based on ancient uh, drawings. <coughs> uh, literature, uh, Finns read a lot. Uh, I think uh, still, I mean, fin Finnish people have been always reading a lot, uh, but uh, still nowadays uh, Finns read a lot. Uh, of course, uh, little bit less nowadays because of uh, there's competition from social media and uh, movies and so on. But uh, we still have a lot of uh, very well-known authors and, uh, uh, and even bookshops still exist. Uh, so uh, perhaps um, a couple of names from um, uh, Finnish uh, literature. Mika Valtari, for example, Sophie Oxanen and Tuve Jansson are very well-known names. Um, libraries have been always part of Finnish society and our culture uh, because uh, the thing that you uh, are able to read, it has been always very much appreciated and uh, a lot of effort has been made to to make uh, people read. And uh, this kind of libraries have been very important, uh, especially in the countryside, because uh, uh, it has been a means uh, for all, also for um, poorer kids to get uh, something to read. So uh, <clears throat> even nowadays we have uh, a very tight uh, library network, and in Helsinki there's a brand new uh, library, which is called Audi, and uh, it is not only about books. Actually, it is uh, much more than books. So uh, there's a play play area for kids. There's a recording studio, movie theater, cafe, restaurant, and uh, it's very nice <coughs> architecture. And it is also situated in the middle of middle of Helsinki, so it's very easy to to visit. And uh, uh, so there, you can go there with kids, so it's not a problem. And uh, um, also, there are sewing machines for preparing. There are 3D printers, so it's really multitasking uh, building, but with a lot of books as well. So this is, uh, on the right side you see the Audi building, and the other, other picture on the left hand side is uh, from inside. And you cannot actually visit Finland without uh, uh, knowing the word sauna. So, more saunas than cars in Finland, 3.2 million saunas for 5.5 million people. Um, it says here that we go to the sauna naked. That is true. Um, 
<laughs> it says here often together with family or friends, but I have to say that uh, it might depend on the area or, or geography or the families, but uh, usually you go with your own fami family. I would say less with friends. But uh, uh, I have noticed that this is uh, somehow quite interesting cultural factor because in sauna, really, we go naked uh, and it's nothing to talk about. But I noticed that for foreigners, it is uh, a big question. And uh, with foreigners, I always, always uh, we use swimming suit to be sure that nobody gets hurt about this habit. And uh, here you can use towels as well. Here is one type of sauna you can see. This is quite modern, beautiful sauna. This one as well, fresh one. So uh, sauna is, um, yeah, you can ask why do we go to sauna, but uh, I would say that basically uh, if you have a house, basically everything has a sauna inside. And of course, in earlier times, it has been really for washing up. Um, but nowadays, I would say that, uh, of course, everybody has a shower. So it's more like uh, in the cities, more like relaxing. And uh, it is definitely a very big part of our summer holidays. Uh, for example, I, I'm going to Finland, and uh, definitely we will go to our summer holiday uh, to spend uh, some days uh, at the summer cottage, which means that uh, basically uh, we stay there and uh, we make some food. Uh, perhaps we go fishing and make something uh, outside. Uh, some nice food, and then, of course, sauna and swimming. That's about it. Just relaxing. <clears throat> okay, then um, a few words about traveling, traveling with families. So, of course, Finland is also a good destination for, for those with kids. Um, a lot of activities and outdoor adventures available. So some, both summer and winter. So both are nice. Maybe you recognize this character, I don't know, but this is something that all the fin Finnish kids for sure they know. Um, they are Moomins. So Finland is the home, is home to the Moomins. And Tuve Jansson is the author and creator of the Moomin books. Um, and they, moments are lovable round characters, characters and um, um, about uh, um, 50 different languages. Um, you can find the moment, moment books in, in 50 different languages. And it's actually, it's not only for kids, it's also fun for adults. Um, and it's, um, I would say, the movement, it's a whole, like, a mentality, and there's a unique way of life behind it, so it's something definitely worth uh, getting to know. Um, and there is a theme park in in the western part of Finland, which is called the Moomin World, so if, uh, if you travel with kids, it's definitely uh, ni nice to visit visit that place and also Nar Valley it's a very very idyllic and very very lovely little little town old town so definitely worth visiting and that's actually also where our president has his summer residence so then there is a uh, Suomen Linna Sea Fortress which is in uh, Helsinki, just outside Helsinki. I will show you the picture. Um, so this is something that was built during the Swedish Swedish time when Finland was part of Sweden um, in, in uh, 1750. Um, it, it was uh, called and, uh, but and Viapori is the Finnish name, but uh, Suomen Linna means um, 
uh, actually it means the castle of Finland. So we have a very nice archipelago um, in Helsinki, and you can you can take take very nice like day day cruises on the on the archipelago and um, and uh, also visit Suomenlin. It's it's something uh, fun for the whole family, but also from a historical perspective, it's it's uh, something very interesting. Um, and of course, we also have some amusement parks. Uh, two of the most iconic ones are Linnanmäki in Helsinki and Särkänniemi in Tampere. Uh, I think Linnanmäki is the biggest one and the oldest oldest one. It has um, its specialty is this uh, wooden roller coaster, which was built already in the 1950s. So it's Part of the attraction that you hear the hear it hear the wood wood scratching and you kind of you just hope that it will stay together. So far, it stayed together. Um, and in in Linnanmäki, there is also this uh, aquarium called Sea Life, which is uh, very nice to visit. Um, then, to, continuing about the archipelago. Uh, we have a very, very famous lighthouse, Benchad Lighthouse, which is nowadays um, a museum. Um, it was built in um, 1906, and in the 90s it became a museum, and it's the tallest lighthouse in the Nordic countries. So this is um, on an island, uh, quite far, far from the... Uh, from the shore, so it's something very, um, um, very special, special to visit, and it, it's very popular depending on the year. But even up to 50,000 50, people visit it a year. Here are a few pictures from that. It's quite a um, rough the nature there. Uh, we also have a few nice uh, zoos. Korkeasaari is um, one of the oldest zoos in the, actually in the whole world. Um, it was founded in 1889. It has some 150 animals um, and uh, like from all over the world and also many many uh, endangered species you can see there and it's also very um, uh, from a personal perspective, I don't always like visiting zoos because sometimes they make you sad. But this is a zoo that doesn't make you sad. It makes you feel good because it also has a very strong element of, of uh, uh, conservation. So that I, and it's very nice to actually you can access it with a boat from from uh, Helsinki uh, city center. You just take a short 20 minute boat ride and uh, you are there. Uh, then we also have uh, further up north, we have a zoo called Ahtari. It's in southern Ostrobotnia. And uh, there we actually have pandas. So that's a very popular attraction. And even further up north in Lapland, we have uh, Ranua Wildlife Park, which is also fun to visit. And they, they have... Uh, among others, they have uh, polar bears. Um, yes, the ambassador will continue on food. Uh, and before going on to food, I forgot to mention about Finnish uh, summer festivals because uh, uh, I have to say that Finland is really a promised land of different kinds of summer festivals. Uh, music festivals in you can uh, take part in the jazz festivals, uh, heavy metal festivals, or classic music uh, festivals. Uh, they are everywhere in every corner of uh, Finland, bigger or smaller. Of course, uh, some of the some of the festivals are very well known, but also the uh, smaller ones are really nice to visit. At. And um, uh, if you are, uh, if you love opera, there is one special thing which is called Savolina Opera Festival. Usually, 
uh, a couple of weeks in uh, July. Of course, this July, I think it's still a question mark, but I hope that they can make it because, of course, it's uh, very important for tourists, also very important for Finns. There are Finns who have gone there for tens of years, and uh, uh, the special surroundings makes it special. So this uh, festival takes place in an old uh, castle, and everything is fitted to, to make it uh, uh, to be performed in a castle. And um, uh, this, is, this has been a very successful, uh, uh, successful type of festival. And uh, perhaps also those who haven't been so much, uh, perhaps not so much liked uh, the opera music, even those are now addicted to this uh, atmosphere in Savolina. We also have, of course, uh, uh, summer theatres. Uh, there is, of course, the language problem, but uh, perhaps some of them could be also nice to see. Uh, museums, a lot of museums in different parts of Finland, but also scenic routes, which you can take if you are traveling by car. And then about food. Um, so um, when people ask what is our national food, it's a little bit difficult to say what it is, because we have, uh, we have uh, characteristics from East, from Russia, and West, from Sweden, and probably from Baltics and, uh, and so on. So uh, I would say that uh, uh, what I would recommend definitely is fish, in uh, any, any type of fish and in any form. Because it's always fresh, it's always really good. And for example, in the Helsinki uh, marketplace, you can uh, you can have a look at all those fishes they have been catching, catching, and people go there and they buy it there. So um, here you see uh, uh, typical rye bread with uh, some salmon. Uh, above it. And uh, if you go to uh, a city called Kuopio, for example, you are definitely going to uh, meet the word kalakukko, uh, which means uh, a ripe bread which is filled with fresh vendis or a kind of uh, white fish. Uh, it can also be made with uh, uh, meat or perhaps also with, I think it's turnip, uh, some, some kind of a sort of a vegetable thing. But uh, definitely this fish uh, version is the best one. And uh, uh, Kuopio is very... Uh, Famous for its kalakukko, but of course you can get kalakukko also in in shops, uh, in different different uh, smaller shops as well. So this is how it looks like. Uh, so you just cut it and then uh, warm it, and uh, then you have to use some uh, butter. So it tastes very good. Uh, we love black licorice. Uh, we call it the uh, salmiakki, which is uh, spiced up with ammonium chloride. And uh, this is if we go, uh, like we go abroad and we live abroad, we work here. So uh, what our guests uh, uh, bring with, to us is usually salmiakki, so that we can survive survive the next next weeks and months. Um, here you can see a couple of uh, Easter things. It's mignon eggs on the uh, left-hand side. And then we have this uh, porridge, rye porridge, <laughs> uh, which is here on the right side. It's very good. It doesn't look very good, but it's, it's really nice as well. 
Uh, then we have some uh, uh, dairy products, sour mi milk like Pima. It's uh, yeah, tasty, curd like Billy, and uh, homemade style cheese got the use of like cottage cheese and um, bread cheese from Pla Lapland, which is not actually bread. It looks like this and with the cloudberry sauce. And Karelian pies. This is uh, a Karelian tradition. So uh, in the eastern part of Finland, so you have this uh, uh, filled with uh, some rice. It can be also, also filled with uh, potatoes, smashed potatoes, uh, but usually with rice. And then you have something on top of it, like uh, a mix, mix, uh, mixture of butter and eggs. Or here, I think you have also some something else. Uh, I think it's per se or something like that. Yeah. So, and here, when you have finished the trip, you can go to Tallinn, which is easy, no visas. St. Petersburg, if you plan to visit St. Petersburg, you definitely need a visa and you have to take it long beforehand so that uh, it's easy. But uh, traveling there is easy. One way trip takes only three and a half hours by, uh, by train, Allegro. And uh, also St. Petersburg is definitely worth a visit. It's a beautiful city. And of course, Stockholm, we don't have the picture of Stockholm here, but uh, definitely worth a visit by ferry. And uh, now I'm coming uh, to the end of my presentation. And uh, I would say that you are most welcome to Finland to see, see Finnish nature, our lakes and forests, meet Finnish people to eat uh, our fresh fish, but at the moment I have to say that everything depends on pandemic. <laughs> but I hope that when we are uh, on clear waters that you have the chance to, to visit us uh, in, uh, in the north, north of uh, uh, Lithuania and uh, meet us there. Thank you. Thank you very much. We have, we have the applause. I don't know if you can see them, but we are very much thankful. Um, I have one question. Uh, in a year uh, um, marked by COVID-19, uh, the World Happiness uh, Report has emphasized uh, Finland as a number one country. Would you mind telling us what is the um, secret of happiness? Perhaps we don't demand so much. <laughs> but uh, I would say that it's the, it's the lifestyle, environment. Uh, I mean, people care about environment, nature, um, and also the living standards, of course that uh, uh, there are very few uh, really poor people. So in that sense, uh, people can live uh, rather normal lives, uh, even during COVID times. Of course, now we see that the COVID situation is, uh, is to be longer than expected. So uh, definitely there will be difficulties. I think that uh, there will be businesses uh, that go bankrupt. But on the other hand, of course, there have been uh, 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 different kind of support measures to, to restaurants and, and to, to people who have been working. So, uh, but we will see how it continues. But uh, perhaps Anni, as a younger person, yes. has some other perspective. Well, I think one of the really unique things uh, in our society is is trust. Like it's it's visible throughout the society in different in different fields. Like 
I would say that the basic assumption is that you always trust your neighbor and you always trust the other person, um, you know, unless they do something that makes you suspicious. But the, the, like the first idea is that you trust always people. And that's something that makes things quite much easier in the society, I would say. So I don't know, it may be difficult to explain, but it's, it's because it's, it's a feeling, it's a sense, sense of trust that you have in, this, in the society. You can trust that you are being taken care of. You can trust that um, you know people hold on to their words. If they promise to do something, they will do it. Um, and it's also um, visible, for example, in our school system, um, which, um, as you know, is, is a very high quality one. Um, so, uh, like, uh, ki kids trust their teacher, teacher trusts the kids, parents, the parents, they trust the teacher and, and so on. So it, it creates this like atm positive atmosphere. Um, maybe another thing that comes to my mind is equality, not only between uh, different genders, but also different, uh, I mean, we're not a class society, so it's, you can become anything you want. And it's, it's partly because of our education system. Yeah, and basically we don't have so many rich people, but we don't have uh, poor people either. So, um, of course, there are millionaires and mil millionaires as well, but uh, it's not like a really strict uh, uh, gap between those uh, those two. Um, I thought that... Yes, Giovanna, you have a question. Uh, yes, I do. Um, from the outside, it seems that the trust is also with the government. I think the social system has worked well, the national health care system worked well. So the sense of trust, I, I understand. But I've also heard Denmark claim they have the happiest people. Ambassador, what would you say about that? Uh, they might might be the happiest in theory, but we, we have the ranking. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, I can tell you, I am from Denmark. We had the we had the first place for many years, but now Finland they ruled over us for a couple of years now. So we have second or third uh, yes. place now. Yeah, but I have to say that the Nordic countries are always there. I mean, you can see different kinds of rankings and uh, uh, Finland, Sweden, Denmark. Uh, Norway, Iceland, uh, they are always in the top 10. Uh, it depends on years, which one is uh, on the upper level, or, or, but it depends on people's moods and the situation, of course. Well, well, well done, because I think you, they figured out something in terms of a high quality of life that keeps people in a, in a good way. That's very good. The other question I have is, uh, the weather, Don't, do people get depressed when it's very dark? Because I know it gets very dark there at some point. Yes, I, I get affected by the darkness. It's um, for me personally, I, I, it doesn't, I don't mind if it's minus 30 degrees. Uh, so it's the matter of clothing. But of course, uh, if it's very dark, it's uh, it's a matter of life. But you have been living in Lapland and it's darker there. So how do I you feel about it? I think actually the darkness is worse in, in southern Finland because, you know, in, in Lapland up north, it, it's, pro it's proper winter. So you have snow, snow brings light. You have the maybe the northern lights and um, it's kind of, somehow natural there in the darkness. But in Helsinki, if it's if it's rainy and not like properly cold and maybe maybe not even snow, it's actually worse worse in Helsinki. But I mean we take lots of vitamin C <laughs> D D sorry. C probably as well. Yeah. And, and we eat uh, a lot of berries. Yeah, so to make yeah, it, people make react, it yeah, people <laughs> react differently, and also it's very popular, I think, to travel travel somewhere in the sun in the middle of middle of the dark time. So that, that, that is now, of course, uh, 
uh, a question mark if people can uh, start traveling again because so many people are just waiting for you know the vaccines and they want to get to Italy they want to get okay. to Spain or Greece or wherever <laughs> they see the sun during the winter time thank you very much um, does anyone yes uh, courses uh, um. Um, you were mentioning uh, the schools, teachers and uh, students and uh, parents, a uh, good relationship they have. Um, uh, I have often heard that you have also one of the best school systems in the world. Uh, it's probably, it probably takes a long time to explain uh, what uh, what does it consist of? But if you could tell some sentences about it, please. Yes, it's it's right that uh, it has been also ranked very good, um, and uh, it it is a result of uh, long developments. And uh, you know that Finland was a very agrarian. Uh, country, very poor country, and the only way to get forward is to get good education. And uh, uh, what makes is uh, makes uh, education system good in my mind is that uh, um, it's equal in that sense that uh, you can be poor or you can be rich, but you go to the same kind of schools. And it doesn't matter whether it is in uh, somewhere in the middle of the forest, somewhere, <laughs> somewhere um, far from the cities. But uh, it's always uh, the quality of education is good, and this is dependent on uh, very qualified teachers. So the teachers are the key thing, I think, because. Uh, they have to have a master's degree in uh, educational sciences, and uh, then they practice, uh, uh, I think, one year uh, to get the license, <laughs> the sort of license to, to edu educate. And, and uh, that is very important because uh, if you have uh, these qualified teachers who know how to take the best out of your students and your pupils. Um, so it makes those pupils to have this trust, what was mentioned here, so that uh, you can trust that the teacher knows what she's doing or he is doing, and uh, he or she is working for your best. And also the parents can trust that the, this uh, teachers, they do their best. And uh, teachers are not uh, uh, sort of tied up to very, very strict rules how to teach. They can choose their methods and see how these uh, methods can be uh, modified so that uh, that pupil mass learns. And uh, try to find the suitable means uh, to, to train them. And um, mm, yes, I think those are the things that come into my mind. Do you have mm -hmm. some other? Um, well, maybe just in general, that education is very valued in our society. The way, you know, parents speak to their children about education, it's always like very, education is respected. Um, so, yeah, I think and that's also, yeah, important. That's, uh, I remember from my childhood, uh, my parents, they were all always saying that you are a woman, or, of course, girl at that time, but you have to have education. Remember, education, yeah. education, education. You have to be able to support yourself because you never know how the t life is going to be. So I think that is very important that... It is never meant to be boys only. It is meant to be for girls and boys equally. Mm. And I think it's considered as a, as a privilege to have education and to be able to go to school. And so schools are, are, are free. We don't, we don't have a large uh, network of, of private schools. So the public, public school, school system is like the main, main system. It's, it's free and also school meals are free and they have been 
that was one of the key key um, things when when our school system was developed that they, they provided a warm warm meal for free for every every child so that's how they got got the children to go go to the school um, maybe another special characteristic is um, that no no one is um, left behind so also all the uh, children who have some special needs some challenges they are um, included in the normal class and then they well not all but like they most of them are included in the normal normal uh, class and then just some extra support is is provided to them and okay. actually just the, one, one more thing is uh, um, which is all, uh, usually quite interesting to foreigners that actually our school days are very short so for example uh, like eight or nine year old old kids, they might spend maybe four or five hours a day in the school only. And still the results are, are quite good. So, so okay, thank you. Um, I see Renate uh, is um, raising her hand. Renate, uh, I don't know if you noticed, but the question about Finland, uh, when is the best yeah, time to visit uh, Finland? It. Yes, it's uh, in the winter time. Yes, you have another question, yes? Yes, yes, I do. I mean, all what you're describing costs, of course, money to have free education, free health. And I think all this happened when you found oil. And my question is, I read that every Finnish citizen gets an income from the oil income. Is that true or is that a, a myth? Uh, no, we don't have oil at all. Uh, what am I mixing this up with? Norway, Norway is the rich <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> Yes, but it's very important that it came up because then now you, you can ask the Norwegians how they, how they work with the oil. But <laughs> so how do you pay for all this then? Where, where do we get all <laughs> we, pay, <laughs> we pay taxes. We pay taxes. Wow. So, um, so, of course, it's uh, criticized as well, but uh, I mean, we are used to paying these taxes and uh, as long as we get uh, uh, enough for our taxes, so I guess it's going to be uh, acceptable. But of course, if, if there comes the time that when we feel that the taxes are too much, so then, of course, it creates the problem. And I see the problem coming when we are aging very, very fast and uh, mm. uh, too few kids and uh, perhaps too few immigrants at the moment um, who could work in the society. So that might uh, raise some concerns at some point. Uh, actually, it raises already some, some questions at this moment. How, how can we keep up this welfare state uh, if we don't have enough uh, uh, taxpayers? So that is mm. that is a great question for for future governments how to work it out. Mm. Uh, yes, I saw this question. When is the best time to go to Lapland to see the Northern Lights? Now I give the answer oh, to well, in the winter. I would say uh, maybe February, March. In the winter. Mm. But you can you can Good. see in uh, Lapland, uh, I think almost till May, uh -huh. I think, yeah. and in a very good weather with sunshine. So <clears throat> it's not only in uh, January, February you can go there. It's also later on in the springtime. Mm. <clears throat> Do we have any more questions? Yes, please. Sorry, Anna. I, sorry I was going to say that isn't it also good governance, of course, but also that you have a small population. Yes, uh, you mean uh, like... You know, so it's easy, easier to regulate and it's easier to keep control and it's easier... I mean, we have 58 million and uh, nobody knows what's going on. I mean, we're just too many people kind of thing to... Yes. Look, I'm not saying that your government isn't fantastic. I'm just saying it is easier when the population is smaller. 
Yes, definitely. That is that is easier to <coughs> to govern if you have a have a smaller number of people. And uh, Finland is still rather homogeneous, but uh, of course we also have our problems and. Uh, uh, very difficult problems to, to be to be solved uh, in the long run. How how to get get enough people who who work, and uh, how to be able to pay all these uh, services? What we of course we don't want to give them up because we are so used to them. So uh, uh, our governments really have to work to get the economy going and. Uh, uh, to get new investments in Finland and workplaces. Uh, but um, I would say in Finland, uh, trade unions are very strong still. So there is a lot of, lot of uh, negotiating between trade unions and uh, then the government how to, how to make uh, some adjustments perhaps uh, to the uh, rules what we have at the moment. Yes, Victoria, can you can you turn on your Hi. Um, am I right in thinking that Finland tried the guaranteed income for for a while, but I think they've you stopped that now. Can you just talk uh, a little bit about that? It's, uh, basic in income. Yes. yes. Yeah. Uh, there was an experiment, but I think uh, now it has gone uh, to the background. Perhaps because of this pandemic and so on, uh, and uh, at the moment I haven't heard about it. But now I notice that I'm already five minutes late. I have to go to another meeting on on other online teams. But if you have questions, please uh, uh, ask Anni. Anni, so Anni can uh, answer your questions. So much uh, for taking thank, it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. See you. Bye. <laughs> Uh, if I may, would like to ask uh, another question. Uh, some decades ago, not long time, uh, Finland was, I think, uh, one of the had the, one of the worst rates in Europe uh, of heart uh, problems. And you have then introduced the program and uh, and made great results. Uh, if you can tell what was this program, we changed uh, the statistics. Yes, um, probably I don't have a very detailed <laughs> answer in, in this. I'm not, not an expert in this, but so one of the factors that was behind it is um, our genes, so our, our gene pool. So mm -hmm. this was just like... Um, one of the factors why why we have a lot of uh, or have had a lot of uh, heart diseases. Um, but you're right that there was, I would say that it, it has been more of a like an awareness raising campaign for many, uh, many decades. So uh, more healthy eating, you know, less red meat, less butter, <laughs> less alcohol, definitely. So it's been more of an awareness raising um, uh, program uh, than anything else. And also um, the typical target audience has been like men, maybe middle-aged men uh, who are not so willing maybe always to go to the doctors. So also getting this like knowing your body and knowing um, knowing your cholesterol levels and uh, that kind of um, encouraging to get that kind of information has been an important part of that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you very much. Anyone else? Ladies, maybe any more questions? I think that we are... We have had answered all our questions. Great. And 
Thank you very much uh, for your time. This was uh, actually, I really enjoyed for this virtual trip and uh, it was a very long time ago since I traveled myself to Finland. And um, now I will be traveling and looking at Finland in uh, definitely uh, different eyes. So thank you very much for that. Great. Thanks for having us and, and listening to us and uh, you're most welcome to Finland. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, you ladies. Thank you.